All right, guys, here's our final review before the test. We're going to look over the three rules, the alternate, the corresponding, and the interior. We're also going to look at uh, the laws of the triangle and the simple steps we need to follow when trying to solve a large geometric problem. The first one we're going to look at is the alternate angle rule. So these are the angles that are between the parallel lines but on opposite sides of the transversal. So if you look at this 120 right here, it's between the parallel lines, <clears throat> but it's also opposite to the F. It means you have to cross over the transversal and go down, or you have to go over the transversal and up. The E, in this case, over here, it's between the parallel lines, and it's over the transversal and up. So the two blues, the 60 and the E, are the same, and the F and the 120 are the same. <clears throat> Another way of looking at it, I'll just show you the Z like that. That means that this angle and this angle are the same, and this angle and this angle are the same. And again, all the laws that we're going to go over, um, they only apply to angles, uh, sorry, when you have par parallel lines. Next, we have the, um, the interior angles. If you look at these two angles between the pair, again, always between the parallel lines, on the same side of the transversal, so we're looking on the left of the transversal right here, these two angles, when you add them up, they always add up to 180. They're supplementary, and that's the interior law. Now, the same thing applies on the right-hand side. These two angles will always add up to 180. So if you're given this one, and let's say it wasn't 60, let's say it was 70, then the other one has to be 110 because they have to add up to 180. So those are interior laws. And finally, we have um, the corresponding laws. Again, we always have our parallel lines. We start off with that. And the other thing about the interior laws is that they are on the same side as the of the transversal. So you have the 120 and the 120. But this time, you have one that's within the parallel lines and the one that is just outside of the parallel lines. So this one is below the, the top parallel line, and this one's below the bottom parallel line. And so those two are the same. The same thing over here, they're, congr uh, they're congruent. If you look over here, the same side of the transversal, you have the 60, and you have a 60. One is below the upper parallel line, and one is below the bottom parallel line, and they're always congruent. Those, that is our corresponding, and that's our letter F. Sorry, I should have shown you that the interior angles, this is our C. Okay. Looking at this one, uh, so you're trying to figure out what are the missing angles. You're always looking at the, the clues that were given. The first clue we're given is that these are parallel lines. The other clue that we're given here, these two little marks. And those two marks um, indicate that this is an isosceles triangle, meaning that two sides are congruent, this side and this side. Now, uh, one of the ways to uh, try and figure uh, this out, if let's say this here was a 30 degree angle. We know that this angle and this angle have to be equal. And there's a couple of ways to remember that it's these two angles in an isosceles triangle. The first thing you can do is you start at the, the vertex between the two uh, angles that are sides that are congruent, and you slide your finger all the way down to the, the, the next point of intersection. And the angle that's right there is equal to the same angle on the other side. You slide your finger down, and it's on the other side. The other tip is this. Imagine this is an arrow pointing at two angles. Well, those are always the equal angles. In this case, we have a 30 degree angle here and we have x and x. And they're both called x because they are the same. That's the whole point of an isosceles triangle. These two are the same. So if you look at it, we have x, because of the laws of the triangle, plus x plus 30 must equal to 180, like all triangles. If we simplify that, we have two x's plus 30 is equal to 180. And using very simple algebra, we have 2x is equal to 180 minus 30, 2x is equal to 150, 
Therefore, when we divide both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 75. So that means that this angle right here is equal to 75, and this angle is equal to 75. My awesome drawing. Last but not least, so we have a big monster like this. Um, always, first thing I always tell you guys to do is to identify what is given. We've got a bunch of stuff here. We've got some angles. This is also an angle. And that looks pretty much it. And so we've, once we've located all our information, you can start any way you want. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever you're comfortable with. For example, for some people, it's finding the opposite. They see an X. And so they're right away thinking, oh, okay, well, those are opposite angles. So if this is 42 here, that must be 42 there. That's pretty straightforward. Then uh, some people, they see supplementary laws really quickly. So they see a straight line, and they see a, a line intersecting. And you can continue it always, right? So we have a transversal. So if this is 100, and the total must be 180, then that has to be 80 on this side. Uh, same thing up here. We have a straight line coming across, and we have a transversal. or, And then you've got 42 on one side. So all you have to do is subtract that from 180, and now you've got another x. And so these angles must be opposite 138, 138, and then 42 and 42. Uh, now we have angles of the triangle. We have a 90 degree angle here, a 42 uh, degree angle here, and that's the only other one we have. So we subtract that from 180, and we, right, we end up with 48 degrees. Then we do our corresponding laws. And I'll just highlight here some of the ones we can see. Because we have par three sets of parallel lines, we have lots and lots of laws here. We have a Z, our alternate angle. So that means that this one has to be 80. We have uh, interior. There's a C right here. That means that this one plus this one must be 180. So that has to be 80. We also have our corresponding, uh, let's look at this way. Let's do an upside down F right here. If this one is between the two parallel lines and above it, then just outside of it, but above it, is another uh, corresponding angle. So this one has to be 80 as well. This works on both sides because we have um, over here, we have another Z, our alternate angle. It's 42 degrees here. That means that that has to be 42 degrees here, and so on. It can go on and on and on. Even here, we've got our interior angle, the C. These two, again, are supplementary. The 138 plus the 42, they must add up to 180. And <clears throat> we've got a corresponding interior. And then finally, to top it off, the last one to find, you've got two angles of the triangle and you need your third to make it to 180. I hope that helps.